In this video, we'll try to get some quick understanding on Hibernate framework and a few other terminologies that you should be aware of before we dive into our first example. First, let's try to understand the term framework. You can think of framework as an environment or set of libraries that together will help you address a particular set of related problems. I mean, think about any framework out there. We have Log4j framework to address the problem of logging, thereby we'll be able to trace the application errors efficiently by taking a look at all the logged messages. And we have Maven which acts like a framework or as an environment on which we can run our Maven plugins and these plugins will actually perform the project management tasks. Similarly, Hibernate is also a framework and is there to address a particular set of related problems and those problems are obviously associated with database. We're going to take a look at the difference between dealing with the database in traditional approach versus Hibernate and then you'll see the difference. Obviously Hibernate is going to be a better option. We'll see why in a, in a while. And here are some of the advantages by using a framework and these are quite obvious. Frameworks would save a lot of project development time because you don't have to write all on your own what a framework is already doing. Instead, you can just download the framework and use those libraries that would save a lot of typing. And uh, it will also increase the overall productivity of uh, the project, which is quite obvious. And framework will help you write clean code. You can accomplish the same task with lesser number of lines of code. And at the same time, your code looks more readable, etc. And then we have ORM or Object Relational Mapping Tools. These tools help you map the Java objects with the relational database tables. I mean, if you take a look at a Java object, you have an object called student within which we have all these properties, ID, name, and email. We can sort of map the same with the relational database table. We have student table and its attributes, ID, name, and email. So this is the kind of problem that these ORM tools are going to solve. And here are some of the examples of ORM tools. One is Hibernate, which this course is about. Eclipse Link is another example of the same. If you take a look at how we deal with database using JDBC, we sort of create our database specific query and then using the execute query of the statement object, we'll be able to get back the result set and then we have to manually take care of looping through all the results and assigning those results into an object like student and then we're also adding each of the student object into the students list. Well, all this can be done automatically when you use an ORM tool like Hibernate. So that's going to save a lot of time and a host of other benefits. And one of the real reasons why we want to use an ORM tool is it would help you get rid of some of the discrepancies associated with we trying to map the Java objects with the relational database tables. For example, not all data types that are supported in Java are supported in database. So tools like Hibernate are actually going to solve that problem and it would enable the developers to interact with the Java objects while Hibernate is actually taking care of mapping those objects with the relational database tables and is going to perform all the database operations. So these ORM tools are going to provide that kind of an abstraction for developers so that they more or less interact with the Java objects but not with the database. Java Persistence API is simply a specification whose implementation is actually provided by these ORM tools and Hibernate is one of them. So at later point of time, if you try to switch to a different alternative or a different ORM tool, then you have that flexibility because all these frameworks will actually implement the same specifications, which is Java Persistence API specification. And here's the Hibernate definition and you'll be able to understand on your own. Hibernate is simply an open source ORM tool from Red Hat and that is basically a framework that provides implementation for Java Persistence API. And the major role of Hibernate is to map the relational database tables 
with the Java objects. Here is the high level architecture of dealing with the database using the traditional approach, I mean using JDBC. So we have our Java application inside which we're going to use the JDBC API to sort of interact with multiple databases by using the driver manager. And these drivers that are specific to database will actually implement all these API specifications so that we can interact with the database. Coming to Hibernate, Hibernate is actually going to take care of all that headache and we actually interact with the Hibernate framework and then Hibernate framework will deal with all these technologies like JDBC, Java Database, Connectivity and JNDI. We're going to talk about JNDI, Java Naming and Directory Interface when we talk about the connection pooling etc. And it would also use the Java Transaction API to perform the transactions. We're going to take a look at examples of transactions as well. So this is the high level architecture of Hibernate. Now this is not the exclusive architecture. There are a few other components that are involved in this architecture, but I'm not going to present them right now. For obvious reasons, you're not yet aware of some of the concepts involved in Hibernate. But I will definitely revisit the Hibernate architecture and would let you know the other components that are involved in this architecture. So uh, for the time being, this is this is what Hibernate architecture would look like at a very high level. Alright, let's continue from next video.